London, England in 1951. Um, I suppose at, by the age of 12, that was a rather an important moment in my life when I was caught kissing a boy at a rather conservative private boys' school in London. Scott and I, we sort of found each other and, um, and in a cloakroom with a rather lovely sort of smell of wet raincoats and boots, um, we were kissing. And uh, a teacher walked into the cloakroom and we immediately stopped kissing because we realised that it, by the look on his face that it wasn't the right thing to do. We were called into a classroom and we were sat down and the headmaster sat down facing us and he said, you will tell us what went on today. And I couldn't bring myself around to doing it. There was a mixture of, I didn't do anything wrong, and this is going to end very badly, and I didn't know what the, the best way out would be. And in the end, after an hour of complete silence, and our teacher, don't forget in those days there were mortarboards and gowns and were very serious, um, Scott put his hand up and he said, I was kissing, I was kissing Graham. And, um, and that was the end of that. We left the room and the very next morning I hadn't a clue what was going to happen. And school assembly was, uh, of course we had school assembly by Church of England and so we'd sing a couple of hymns and then get on with the day. After the hymns were sung, so after we'd been terribly Christian, uh, I was called up on the stage and uh, I had to lower my trousers in front of the whole school. And with a cane, I was whipped on my buttocks and down my thighs. And then I didn't remember, after that, I didn't remember how painful it was. I didn't remember how embarrassing it was. I didn't remember anything but how unjust it was. And I remember thinking that I should be very careful for the rest of my life because those in power can inflict a great deal of pain. And then after that, I went down and heard Scott being thrashed. I, I don't know whether anybody knew why we were being thrashed. Nothing was said. After I was beaten, I remember that, after I was beaten practically to within, within an inch of my life in, at, uh, at my rather conservative school, I came to my parents and said that I had been beaten and I was red raw. And uh, my father took me back to the school to find out what, was, what it was all about because I couldn't come around to telling him. what it, I was 12. <clears throat> it seemed quite normal kissing this boy at 12 years old, actually. So, um, And he spent... I think about two hours, it seemed like more, talking to the headmaster. I was put in a back room. The uh, evening came, it got darker and darker. I didn't dare turn on a light, so there I was sitting in the dark. And my father was pleading to the headmaster not to expel me. And that would have been the end of that. I was coming up to 13, coming up to the common entry examination, which then took you into public school, which you call private school. And that would be the end of that. Without having a public school education, I would be unemployable to our class. Isn't that awful? But that's how it was. And so in the car afterwards, my father said, um, what happened will never be spoken about again. If this happens again, I could easily risk losing my job. He worked for a very conservative company. He could lose his job because of something I did, which seemed to me to be perfectly okay at 12. And so that was the, the position I was put in at 12 years old. Um, both my parents are retired to the South Coast, which is why I go through Lewis to get to, to see them, my father. There are a lot more widows than there are widowers. And uh, we were driving to a cocktail party at one of their friends and my father said, Graham, it's all right with me, it's perfectly right with me, but can you be a, sort of a little less gay and perhaps not say the word gay quite so often as you normally do because we come from a generation where we, we don't sort of talk about things like that. And I said, oh, very well, Daddy, no problem. So we get to June Bateman and there are half a dozen ladies there and Daddy and we're all drinking fishbowl sized glasses of gin and tonic. And June Bateman, the hostess, she turns to me and she says, Graham, darling, she said, a friend of mine came up to me only the other day um, and told me that her daughter 
was a lesbian. And my father pff, spat out his gin. It went all over the floor and all over the, the table, absolutely everywhere. He went absolutely flushed bright red. And she said, and she doesn't know what to do about it. And perhaps you being a younger, younger person could give us uh, an idea of what to say. And I said, well, June, if she is in love with an image of her daughter, she's in trouble. If she's in love with her daughter, it's going to be plain sailing. It'll be fine. Nothing actually has changed. And she said, thank you so much. And Peter, would you like to refresh your gin and tonic? <laughs> so everybody knew, everybody was cool with, cool with it. But my father, who was a little bit conservative, was uh, kind of shocked. <laughs> That's the story on the South Coast in Sussex. <laughs>